So today, I'm gonna show you how I've been using the sauce, and I'm gonna test myself to see if it's actually made me any faster. And the good news is that nothing has to go in my ass. Now this ride is called the Crucifix. It's in the Dandenongs just outside of Melbourne. And it essentially consists of four climbs and four descents. Now the last time that I did this, it took me just under three hours to do. It's about 70 kilometers long and 1800 meters of elevation. So I'm really hoping that I can beat my time that I did before. There's also one particular segment called the one in 20, and it's probably one of the most contested and well-known rides around here. So I'd like to see if I can get a PB on that section. So come along, see how I go. And then afterwards, I will break down how I use the source and hopefully it's of use to you as well. I'm straight on a climb off the bat, no real warm up. Just got to try and go at a bit of a pace whilst I warm up. And remembering that this is a, it's a pretty solid two and a half hour ride. That's the aim. So we'll see how we go. It is beautiful. A bit wet at times, but I've warmed up now. It's just stunning. Right, that's the first climb done. Feeling a bit warmer now. So we're gonna head on along, down the one and 20, and then back up the one and 20 with the aim of sitting around 300 watts. So we'll see how we go. Just going carefully down this descent now because it's a pretty quick descent, but the road's pretty wet. So no PBs on the descent today, just nice and steady and safe. Halfway up that, oh, my rear tire started going down. So I'm pretty sure I've got a flat tire. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's not, that's not ideal. Tubeless tires are great until they don't seal. I feel like I'll be doing that again at some point. Let's go on. Well, the rear tire's gone down again, so I'm gonna get to the top of this next little climb to sky high. And I've got a CO2 cartridge, so we'll be able to bag a bit more in. again oh, still have to use a co2 and hope I don't need it again all right oh, it doesn't feel good I think I'm just going to put the whole thing in <sighs> dramas I think I'm just 
gonna have to head back. I don't trust that going down some of these hills. <sighs> and me. Well, I made the right choice because that rear tire is flat. It's gonna be interesting going down Devil's Elbow, but we'll see. Just slow and steady. Uh, anyone can recommend good tubeless sealant? Very keen to hear. Well, it's rather annoying, but I'm back. That rear tire is once again oh, completely flat. So not quite the route I planned, but it's still good to get out and do I know 50k and over a thousand meters. <sighs> Never buy muck off sealant. So I'm gonna head home, have a little look at some of the segments now, and hopefully I did them faster than I did last time. Let's see. So I'm back home now. It didn't quite go to plan, unfortunately, having to cut the ride short but I still got enough of done for a ride so I can compare it and hopefully see if I've managed to plan to make it any faster. So the source is a Strava plugin for Google Chrome. And what it does is it just surfaces a lot more of your data that was in there already. And it also gives you a couple of options for predicting how fast you can do certain segments. So if I have a little look at the first time that I did this ride, I can only really compare the one and 20 um, due to the flat tire and everything like that. So the first time I completed it, I got a time of nine minute, 19 minutes and 15 seconds. And I can also see overall on the ride here, I've got surfaced a little bit of details around your powers at different time. It's essentially just off your power curve, but I find that it, it summarizes it a lot better for yourself. So before I went out for each of the four climbs, what I used was I used this uh, performance predictor. So this is really good because it enables you to tweak and you know plan a bit more of an effort so that you can improve your time so when i previously did it 263 watts um and then same weight um bike weight i haven't touched that and my last bike that i did it on was a sub seven kilo tcr so this one's quite a bit heavier so before i went what i decided to do was i updated this power and estimated it at 315. Now it's given a predicted time of 16 seconds, 16 minutes, sorry, and 53 seconds. And I think that could be a little bit uh, optimistic, especially as it's got here um, different things around your CDA and stuff like that, which I'm not too 100% across. Now, if I find my ride from today, the good thing is first thing it will give me is the predictor down the side, not the predictor, the, the coverage. So it gives me your peak power at a few different watts. Um, so five, 10, 15, there was nothing. I wasn't getting out of the saddle to try and sustain any big power. So I'm not really interested there. I've got my 20 minute power. So 3.13, that's about right. Um, and if I go down to the 1 and 20, this time I did 18.26, so nearly a minute quicker. Um, my power averaged 3.23 up there, so a little bit higher than I was actually planning. Um, but I'm happy to go PR. I'm, I'm curious to know, obviously, how much that rear tyre going down affected me. And it had a little bit of a headwind up near the end but it is what it is. Um, it's also really good because it gives you, it surfaces these categories for yourself as you across the segments. 
Um, I use those as, you know, if you're racing, that's your category for your racing. So going up as a Cat 3 racer for me is pretty good. Um, and it also gives me a little bit of a summary. So, you know, power of 4.4 watts per kilo, which I'm pretty happy with for, you know, 18 minute effort. You can go and have a look at some other people's accounts and it will also, you can see all of their data and rankings in it just as well. So it's quite a good performance indicator and especially you see some of the others in their Cat 1 and UCI Pros. It's pretty phenomenal. Um, but for every time I go out now, if I'm planning a ride, if I'm planning a segment, I'll have a look at that performance predictor. I'll see what I did maybe the last time on a segment and I have a little workout of, you know, what I can do to aim for a particular time. And as someone who's really goal orientated, for me, it's, well, I spend too much time looking at this and using the source on pretty much all of my rides. But what that does is it does push me to work harder than I probably would otherwise. So give it a go. I'm really keen to know if anybody knows any other apps that's really good for just analyzing some of the data for planning segments and timed efforts. Please let me know because I'm always keen to give them a try. And hopefully I can get back out next week, maybe finish the ride um, pending fixing some tubeless tyres. Ugh.